I just wanted to, to, to quote um, the great Sir, Sir Karl Popper, just in the, in the theme of the night, when, when he said, good tests kill flawed theories. Over to you, Senator Roberts. Thank you, Darren. And good evening, everyone, and welcome. I also want to welcome an empty seat over here. Because at that seat, it's empty because we invited the CSIRO to come and join us on this panel. It's there in case they change their mind. We also inv invited, correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, Greg Hunt, Mark Butler, Larissa Waters. In my first Senate speech on Tuesday the 13th of September, I said, quote, Australians should be able to rely on the information from Australian government bodies and institutions, such as CSIRO, but we can't, and we certainly can't. The first thing I did after, after being sworn in as a senator was to go back immediately to my office and to invite the CSIRO chief executive, Dr. Larry Marshall, to make a presentation to me in two weeks' time. On the two days before, we hadn't had a response, two days before the 16th. So I asked him by, by phone if he'd be attending. His office said yes, they would be. The next day, the day before the presentation, they said they wouldn't be. We would have to contact the minister. So we chased a couple of ministers and we eventually chased CSIRO down and we met, even though they're based in Canberra, the first available time was two and a half hours in Sydney. So we met them there and they made a presentation to us. I asked them specifically for the empirical evidence. That's the measured data, the physical observations, the hard facts. What constitutes and decides science? And we wanted the evidence that proves humans, human carbon dioxide affects global climate and we wanted statistically significant evidence. We listened for two and a half hours. All we did was ask clarifying questions. I said up front that we would not be debating and they appreciated that and made their presentation. I can tell you quite clearly that they have no empirical evidence that carbon dioxide from human activity affects climate. We said that to the press gathered in here yesterday. I've presented a copy of my report electronically and hand delivered it yesterday. So we are awaiting their response. The second thing that we learned from the CSIRO is that when we asked the question, and I asked it personally, what is there in the 2000 year climate record that indicates imminent danger from human carbon dioxide? They refused to answer the question, refused. I asked it again nicely. They refused to answer the question. So we're in agreement, aren't we? There is no danger from carbon dioxide from human activity. The third thing we learned was that they contradict the empirical evidence on climate. The fourth thing we learned is that they have done no due diligence on the data they're using and relying upon from the Bureau of Meteorology. No due diligence. And you'll learn why that's significant tonight. I think you already worked it out. We have, in the last few years, spent wasted $10.2 billion on desalination plants based on a scare from academics like Tim Flannery and others. $10.2 billion based on a scare that the dams will never fill again. And as soon as the desal plants were built, the dams overflowed in most states. The Brisbane floods resulted from a panic in the Queensland government that compromised the Wyvernhoe Dam based on a scare that we would have a never-ending drought. Lives were lost, billions of dollars were wasted. We have seen South Australia being destroyed due to renewable energy. Some people call them alternative energies. They're really alternatives to energy. And South Australia is now paying the price. They're rescued when necessary, which is often, 
by the Hazelwood Power Station in Victoria, which is going to be shut in four months. And that affects people in every state because when Victorians run out of power, they will take it from New South Wales, which will do what to New South Wales power prices? So everyone in this room will pay more for electricity, a lot more. It's already being paid, we're already paying a lot more. The Barrier Reef, we're told, is being destroyed. The Barrier Reef, according to scientists and tour operators, is in the best shape it's been in a long time. Our Australian fishing industry, we are an island continent. We have a tiny population. By me many measures, we have the world's biggest fishing zone. And yet we import almost three quarters of the seafood we eat. Why? Because of the United Nations. That's why. Who are driving this scam, as Tim will explain. We have industry in Queensland and other states, and I'm a senator for Queensland, that are being shut and exported overseas. And when the manufacturing is overseas, they don't have the same high, high quality pollution standards. So the production of real pollutants, sulfur dioxide, nitrous oxides, particulates, globally has increased as a result of our greens policies. We are being devastated industrially. As Tony pointed out to me today, the South Australian government dynamited, if that's the word, exploded a power station and celebrated that just recently. What is the first thing an, en an attacking enemy does to a country when it invades? It knocks out the energy sources. We are being destroyed from within. We have activists destroying, destroying Queensland industry right now, preventing the, the going ahead of the Adani coal mine. Those activists are funded by Americans close to the President of the United States and the potential future President of the United States, Hillary Clinton. We have seen forecasts in 2005 that predicted 50 million climate refugees due to sea level increases by the year 2010. Six years later than that deadline, there have been zero refugees due to climate. Forecast after forecast failed. CSIRO says there's no danger. They have no evidence for their claims. I'd like you to remember th three key phrases. No danger, fabricated data, and groupthink. 